This is Jay from A Stitch in Time. Most of you know me, but that's okay. Today we're going to be making this cork coaster kit. Most of you have seen this before. It's kind of a three-dimensional uh, two layers of cork with a accent layer of vinyl in between. To do this class, you're going to need uh, two pieces of cork fabric. We're using the uh, cork with glitter flake in it. It's not real um, bright or gaudy. It just makes it look very nice and regal. You're going to need a color of heat transfer uh, vinyl. I'm using what's called electric blue from Stalls. We have a large selection of it here. Uh, let's see if this comes up here. Uh, just to give you a little picture here of it, this is what our um, selection of heat transfer vinyl looks like. So if you need other colors, you know, if you want to make this at home and you're doing this later, you're welcome to give us a call and we will get this ordered for you. So we're going to stop that. Um, and you're also going to need a piece of uh, heat and bond. Now, the sizes of these are all going to be about 8 by 12 inches. And that's going to enable you to make all of the pieces that you need for uh, six coast, uh, coasters. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I, I want to talk just a little bit about uh, the cork fabric. People have asked, do you need a special type of cork fabric? And the answer is no. There is some cork that is better than others. Uh, what we are using here is a brand called Eversone. It's, it's very thick and, and it feels almost like leather. It's, it's very nice, got a nice feel to it. We have it in both the natural, which is just a... Uh, it's a really nice, the same feeling as the other, but it doesn't have the gold flake. But we also have these, we have a few of the rolls left yet of the navy. And I have to take it out of the bag here because you got to see it to see how rich this is. It is just beautiful uh, cork fabric. And if you were to do this and have the accent color be like silver, that would just be very, very uh, neat. But I didn't have enough of this to cut kits for everyone, so we didn't do that. If you want any of this stuff, uh, you can make comments in this in the side thing there. The cork fabric in these big rolls is thirty four ninety five a roll. Uh, it is expensive. It's twenty seven inches wide by a yard long, and but it is about the going rate for cork. It is a good quality product. What we're offering is we're offering you ten percent off if you let us know here that you've watched this video, and if you let us know before. Uh, we're going to say October 5th, you will, uh, we will, and you order more than $60 worth, we will give you free freight to the continental U.S. We also have a bunch of ones here from Brother. There are a total of, of nine different colors that they have, and there's just some fun ones with fun patterns to them. Here is a kind of a champagne, I think they call it, I'm not sure what they call it, or a, a coral it's a, kind of a pinkish reddish, and it's got silver, silver flakes in it as well. And then you have some of these other ones. These ones really look great in handbags and some stuff like that. These ones run twenty dollars a piece, and it's twelve by twenty-four inches, so you can get one big mat uh, cutting out of it. So if you want any of those, I, I have a limited supply of them, but uh, the first ones who respond in the comments saying that you want them, let me know, and we will take care of them. Okay, so let's get together. How are we going to get this started? Well, we're going to do a little prep work on our material first. And to do that, we're going to uh, fuse, we're going to fasten this vinyl film to the back of our one piece of cork. And then we're going to take our other piece of cork and we're going to fasten the heat and bond to the back of that. And to do that, I'm going to switch over to my, uh, my heat press and let's Get over here. Come on. There we go. All right. So I have my heat press set at 305 degrees. And for the heat transfer vinyl, you want to uh, put that down for 15 seconds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this down. And it's always good with m most uh, heat press things to do it for four or five seconds um, to take some of the moisture out of it especially I've noticed with this cork fabric, it tends to absorb a lot of the moisture in the air. So we're going to take that 
and then we're going to take and position this. Now, what I did is I made sure that my vinyl was just a little bit narrower than everything else around, but I still put across a Teflon sheet just to make sure I don't have any problems with that sticking. Now, so this is going to be on for 15 seconds. This is the little pink press that we sell. These are really handy. They're not that expensive in the realms of heat presses. They're 350. And when it beeps at me, when it's automatically when it's done, and then I pick this up. And for the vinyl, you want to peel it while it's hot. There we go. And now that is all nice and ready to go. So now we're going to do the same thing with our heat and bond. I'm going to take my cork fabric, kind of preheat it a little bit just to get the, uh, the moisture out of it. Make sure it's nice and dry so that the, it adheres well to it. And I, I want to make sure this is positioned right because I don't want to, you know how much fun it is getting that sticky stuff off your iron or off the, off the mat. And so when you're doing heat and bond, I usually use uh, 300 to 305 degrees and I usually do about six seconds. So I'll take this down here till I had, I could set this at six seconds now, but I'll do that at nine. And now with the heat and bond, I usually find it best to let that cool down um, on some other surface, you know, so before I peel that off, it, it seems to form a more secure bond with it. So now I will take this and peel that off. And then you can see it's that nice uh, surface. It's got all that nice glue on it there. Okay. So now we're going to go back over to here and I'm now I'm going to cut these and we're going to watch I'm going to show you how this is done now if you downloaded the file that I created before I gave you a blank one that has nothing in it you could put whatever you want in there as well that's a whole different story I'm going to pretend that you already have your file downloaded just like I have this one here and then we're going I'm just going to show you how to cut it today so let's move over here to this one Okay, and wake up. So I have my design is going to be, uh, I had it done, I designed it in the Scan and Cut Canvas workspace. And so I sent it over to the machine. I'm going to go retrieve data, and I'm going to look for it from the Internet. And here is my file. That's the one I want. Now I want to edit this because I'm going to, first of all, let me just explain what this is to you. We're going to cut this row actually we're going to cut two rows like that, out of the uh, one with the heat transfer vinyl, the one with the colored vinyl on the back of it. That's what we're going to cut out of that row. This row is going to be for the bottom one. So what I need to do is I'm going to delete this and duplicate these ones. And I'm just going to go quickly. And if you have questions at the end, you can uh, ask me uh, in the chat section. So I'm going to go to Edit. I'm going to go to Select. And I'm going to drag a box to select just the ones that I want to get rid of because I'm going to do the, the uh, background ones first. I don't, I don't want to delete that one. I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to send these into the trash can. Is it OK to delete the selected data? Yes. And now we're here. We're good. Now I'm going to go back in here again. I'm going to select everything that's in here. And I'm going to go into Object Edit. I'm going to group it. And then I'm going to duplicate it. And we're going to duplicate it one time. Oops, I'm sorry. I want a total number of two rows. And now I can take this and put these right down there. And... I'm going to move that down just a little bit. If you have to move something a little, just a little tiny bit, when you come back here, you can use these arrows and it lets you nudge them just a little bit and it makes it easier. Now, I'm ready to cut that, but I need to make sure that it's going to fit on my, uh, on my vinyl. So to do that, I'm going to take and... 
I'll, I'll show you over here on the other one what I'm doing. So I've taken my vinyl, and you want to put it with the cork side down and the heat transfer vinyl side up. Okay? And now I'm going to take this over to the scan and cut, and I'm going to press this to load the mat. And now I want to scan the background in to make sure that I, there's enough of space for everything. So I just press the background scan key, scan it in. And then now I can see. Now the background is a little hard to see on here sometimes. And so you can always take the little wrench and you can change the background to be dark. But then it's a little hard to see your circles. And so I have it grayed out a little bit so that I can still easily see. And I, I can make sure that everything's going to fit in there just fine. All right, so now I'm ready to cut this out. I go over here to select. I go to cut. I am going to use the pressure at auto. I'm going to let the speed of the machine be normal at five. And I'm, but I'm turning my half cut off. We don't want to be only cutting halfway through. We want to cut the whole way through. So I already did a test cut, and but I, if you want to do that, you can as well. And so now it's going to just do a quick test. And maybe I can turn this here so you can watch it a little bit. So how long can you use a mat when you're cutting cork fabric? Well, I had a uh, an embroidery garden party here uh, two years ago, and we cut out over 80 packets of, of um, 80 designs for the, uh, the one uh, cork bag that Doreen taught. And we, did two, we had two of these machines running constantly. And we were able to get them all uh, cut out on one mat each. So we're able to use the same mat for all of them. It's one of these times I am going to do a little presentation on how to retack your mat after it starts to lose its tack a little bit. So now, now when I'm all done, now I'm going to come up here and press OK. And then I'm going to discharge my mat. And so you can see here. I can take this, and there I have those all done. This is the back of my coast coasters. And now I'm going to load the front on. And I'll just put this up out of the way here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to take this and position this right up at the top there. And I'm going to use my little brayer on it to make sure I get all the air out from underneath it. I want a nice, good, firm bond to it. Okay. And now I'm going to load my mat back onto my, my carriage. Now, one of the nice things is you notice that I had... Oh, you notice that I had downloaded this from the internet. We're going to go back to the home. Whoops. We're going to go back to the home screen. Okay, delete all patterns. That means it's just deleting them off my workspace. Yes, it's okay. I'm going to go retrieve the same pattern from the website because it's still there. And so now I still have all my files. So now what I want to do is I want to edit this. I'm going to select and I can touch those three. That's another way of selecting them. I'm going to click here. I'm going to delete those and click OK. Now, I'm going to select here 
and that's going to select everything. I'm going to go to Object Edit. I'm going to group them. I'm going to duplicate them. I want two rows of them. And now I can take this up here and put it right up at the top. And put this other one right below that. And that will give you my six coasters. So now I go back over here. What I need to do? Well, I need to scan my background to make sure that it's going to fit on my on my cork fabric. One thing I'm noticing is that the uh, the cork fabric is fairly stiff, and if you don't have support back there on the back side of your mat, it can act a little goofy for you. Now, one of the things I have in the instructions that I emailed out to everyone this morning, and if you go to our website, which is um, sobemidji.com, and you go to the classes, there's one for the scan and cut, and if you sign up for, the, for this class, the class is free, or the, the instructions are free, there will be a uh, sheet you can uh, download that has all these instructions in it. But one of the things I want to make sure you're aware of, make sure if you're using a letter that you mirror this these designs, okay? Because you're cutting on the back side of the cork, and so you need to cut the letters or things that are directional in reverse. Otherwise, you'll be ruining a piece of cork, and none of us really want to do that. And so now we click OK. We go back over here to the, to the cut. We are going to select that. It's going to take about five minutes to cut. And we are going to start this. And now it's going to start cutting. So this is a project that I was I, I had seen other people do cork coasters or cork things before, but I had never really made any project. And we have a bunch of children at home. We have 11 children, and they are now getting old enough that they get to have uh, coffee on Saturday mornings. And there's a lot of coffee gets uh, coffee cups get set around our house. And I thought, hey, it might be nice to make some cork coasters. How could I do these? Make, how can I make something fun? And this was something I just came up with. Obviously, I used the S for hours, and it was a nice little way of, of do, using cork. You could do this with some of the faux leather that's out there. Whoops. You could do this with uh, with different types of you could like you could use glitter flake in some places. You can't use glitter flake inside of here. And the reason being is that you can put several layers of vinyl on top of each other but you can't put vinyl on top of glitter. The texture is too rough that it won't bond well. It'll just bond with the glitter. A lot of my customers that were in the store looking at this project, they said, oh, can I use some of the glitter? Because we have like 25 colors of glitter out there, and some of it is really cool, but it's not going to adhere well on here. But if you just wanted to make it out of the cork and you wanted a glitter letter on top of here, and then a different uh, like felt on the back, you know, for something to to give it uh, some body that would work as well. And so it's something that you can um, play with and experiment on your own. So how many of you uh, made the pattern? Um, okay, so um, Jerry said you did not get the file to download. Um, I will have to uh, look at emailing you uh, afterwards because uh, that file can be can be downloaded uh, easily as well. So, and, and and the instructions. Did you all get the email that I sent out this morning? Uh, at least, if you, the only way you would have gotten the file to download is if you had registered on our website. I did not email that to everybody only to those who had registered on the website for the free pattern or the paid pattern. And so if you did not get the, uh, 
If you did not get that, then then it's probably because you just forgot to register. If you go register now, you'll get both files, both the blank cut down. You know, it's going to have just the shield shape, and then it'll also have the, uh, but and then it'll have the the shape of the cutters and everything. But it's not going to have the S in it because I figured most of you aren't going to want an S in it. So that's that's why I left left it blank for you guys. You could put anything else in there you want. It doesn't have to be. Um, My mat is starting to lose some of its tackiness. I noticed that it, my uh, my cork let loose a little bit on the other side there. And so you're going to get to see how this works. Okay. Yeah, some, uh, uh, Sandy looks like you got the email. Very good. Or Sus Susanna, sorry. I got too many of you customers to keep straight sometimes. Okay, so now it is all done cutting. And so now I'm going to click OK, eject the mat. I'm going to flip this up out of the way. First thing I always try and do is get my mat cleaned off so that I can then uh, get, the, get the cover back on it as quickly as possible. Now I'm just going to take everything off here at once. But you're going to see there's a lot of pieces in here. Look at that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them all in separate pieces, separate piles. And so I can just get my mat all cleaned off here as well. And then I'll show you how I put them all together. Oops, oops, oops. There we go. Be a little gentle with it when you take them off, but they're, they're, it's, it's pretty sturdy fabric. I've been, it's so much fun to work with. It's just this, this rich feel to it that um, it's, it's very, very pleasant to deal with. Okay, there's that. And last one here. All right, so we're going to set everything over there. All right, so now I take my mat. Now, one of the ways that I find easiest to put the mat back on here is that if I take my thumb and I put it right at the end of this little cutout there, and then I can kind of line everything else up in place, and, and then I just use my brayer, And that, that puts everything down. You want to get as much of the air out of here as possible because the air is what, is what really dries out your mat. And so a little bit of time doing a little prep work in there makes it a lot nicer. Okay, so I'm going to take one of these and I'm going to go over to the heat press and we're going to put one of these together and then you can see how this works. Okay, so what I do is I have a whole bunch of pieces here. And what I'm going to do, first of all, is take this top one and, and line it up so it's perfectly lined up, right on top of it. And then I take my middle piece and I just put it in there. And you want to kind of make sure that you're, you're centering it in the middle of all those pieces. And then I need the little piece in the middle and again I'm, I'm getting just looking to get it close if you have a little tweezers or something else like that that can help make it go in there a little bit easier and then This is where the, having the heat press is going to be a little bit nicer than using an iron. Because now at this point, I can make sure that everything is positioned just the way I want it. And I can push this down. And then I usually do this for about 10 seconds.
And I usually like to let it cool off a little bit before I start flexing it too much. So you can see, I got that one piece shifted up just a little bit too far. But other than that, there it is. And oops, you know what? I didn't get that hot enough. We're going to put that back down there for 15 seconds. It's one of the things, working with a cork, it's a little different. And, and, and to, to get it done. Now, see, this one automatically, when it gets down to the end, it will beep at you. And now I'm going to let this cool off thoroughly before I do any flexing like that on it. Okay, so one of the other things that's nice about here is that we now have other pieces left over. So what you could do, if you wanted to, now I don't know how well this would work for a coaster, but you could do something like this. Because that's not going to be very, very flat. But you could have something, you know, fun that you could do with that. So I, don't, I haven't thrown any of those pieces away yet because I'm not ready to do so.